We are the senior consultant of Preston Integrated Research Limited and you are all welcome. Please say hi to your neighbors because we are all going to be interacting this morning. Say hi to your neighbors. Say <laughs> Yes, so because we are all going to be we are going to be all farmers, big farmers, and you know in business, teamwork and all that is very, very, very important. Like I said, I'm an Integrated Research Limited. I'm a senior consultant over the firm. Two years ago, I was just like you. I was a graduate. I just finished my youth service and agric is my passion. I didn't know how to go about it. And I met some other young guys that said, okay, they also wanted to go into farming. Now for us young people, we don't have money, we don't have land, we don't have anything. We had a passion and we didn't know how to make that possible as in to bring it into limelight. We started looking for patrons, people that can sponsor us, people that can help us, and people that can lead us right. That was how we met. I met the King Egberto from first, and it was like, okay, I know Mr. Emi Adeshino. He has a big farm, and he likes to help young people. Let me introduce you to him. And that was how I met him. He's a very great man, I must say, because as we came on board, he was ready to teach us everything he knew. In six weeks, I was a pig farmer. I could, you know, from the building to taking care of the animals, medication, castration, he gave me everything he knew, from the videos to the handouts, everything. At the end of six weeks, I was a certified pig farmer. There was nothing I cannot do on a pig. And that's because he's an open person. And then again, when I, was, when I finished working with him, because of how much he had put into me, I went back to his company and I worked as a manager for two months. That's a farm that has 1,500 animals. 
I was the only girl there. The others are guys. I had 11 boys under me. But I could just say what made me excel and why we made the farm to keep going forward was the fact that I had someone that could train me properly to do the right things. So like I said, anybody can be like me. You are here, this is the first stage of the whole process. And I believe that most of us here, we are all entrepreneurs. We are going to be the one that's going to be dropping the money to fund our resources, our farms. And I'm so sure you have made the right choice. You are here and you are in the right place. So Mr. Yemi Adeshino, he is um, a certified pig farmer. He has been in the UK for some years. He read Hagrid in the University of Agriculture. And then he has been passing for 25 years. He's a certified fellow. And of course, I have to also say that is, you know, his openness. I'm so sure that's why most people are here. You must have seen his videos on YouTube. You must have, you know, I think why most people come is after seeing the videos, they see this person that is so open, that is willing to teach other people. And that's why we are all here. Nobody knew him from anywhere. It's just trust and what you've seen him do. And I'm sure you will not be disappointed. You are in the right place. Whatever question you have, you are in the right place to ask. Bring all your hard questions. We are all here for you. Whatever is in your heart that you feel okay, this way, your own kind of method, we are not here to impose everything we've learned. So, you, your own kind of method, whatever you think that is on your mind, we'll be able to address those issues and help you to, you know, achieve the kind of dream and vision you have for your farms. And then again, we are all going places. Agriculture in Nigeria, agriculture in Nigeria has really changed face. That's the new thing. That's like our oil mine now. That's the new thing. And you are in the right place. You've made the right decision. I want to make that dream come true. I want to make sure that you actualize that goal. Whichever way, I mean, whatever way you think we can help you, we'll be more than willing to do that. You have questions. Maybe when you start your farm, you have some issues. We will be able to help you do that. Then also, this um, company will also offer a consultant service. Like I said, I'm a consultant. That's Beatrice John. She's also a consultant under this firm. So if you feel, okay, I've had so much, I might not be on ground, and I need people that can help me, that is our job. And I pray today that as you have come, that you not just you will not go in the way you came, and then you have a lot of things to share with other people. You are most welcome. Mr. Emu will soon be with us shortly. Please sit down, enjoy yourself. We have a lot of things for you. There is refreshments, there are handouts, there are certificates, we have flash hairs. If you want, um, we have flash drives. If you want thermometer, we have some other equipment too that you can have access to. Thank you very much. Sit down, relax, we'll soon be with you. Thank you. You are welcome, thank you very much. It's nice to meet all of you. I think I've met some of you guys in the chat room. I don't know if you have seen my face before, one way or the other. Yes. It's a big privilege for me to see all your faces. And it's a great honor to have you in our midst. Thank you very much for coming. Today is going to be an interesting day. We're going to try as much as possible to cover a lot. What I would recommend as we go along is that don't spend too much time writing because we're going to give you an handout. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Uh, today we are going to go through a lot of things, like I said earlier, and uh, this is going to be an interactive, interactive session. By this, I mean that uh, I want us to ask as questions as we go along. The only clause I will have with this is that it is becoming too much. Just let's make sure that questions are relevant and um, they are not in the sky, they are not pie in the sky, they are questions of what is bothering us, of what we want to do next, how we are going to do it, regarding pig farming. Today, everything is about pig farming. I won't talk about catfish, I won't talk about cow or chicken, it's going to be pig farming throughout. Um, let me just give you an overview of what we're going to try and cover within the next 48 hours. We're going to start with introduction, of, introduction to pig production. So we're going to look at what pig production is seeing around the world. In the first TV interview I ever did, I was asked, I told them on the TV that um, 40, uh, on the radio that 48% of the meat that is eaten around the world is pork meat. The radio went after it was strictly chat and question and answer. The radio went ballistic because everybody, especially we and I don't know that the rest of the world eats so many pork, uh, so many pork meat. We, we think that everybody is like Nigeria, that only about 10 or 15% of us eat pork meat. 
So there's a lot of questions I have to find, I have to give the people reference where I find that information from. I told them it's from Food and Agriculture Organization. So since then, anytime I quote that statement that 48 percent half of the meat is sitting around the world, I always quickly quote the source. So people will not bombard me with is it true? Where do you get that information from? So we're going to look at that. So that the reason why I normally start with it is that we are individual farmers. We have our own farm at our backyard or in the bush or in the jungle. Sometimes it's very easy for us to think that uh, we are just small person doing small pig in small farm. But by the time we start saying that we are part of we are we are we are part of the body that provides fifty percent of the meat that is consumed around the world, it started putting more relevance to us. Then we are not represented with the government right now. We can talk to the government and say we are big people because what we produce is what half of the world eats. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of background story about how that happened so that we can now start saying that the way it happened in other countries, they didn't start like that. All these pig things start in a big way in 1950. So we're going to look into how pigs become so predominant in, in food and in, uh, human meat consumption. The second one, now, the second thing we're going to look at is why should you venture into commercial pig production? Why now? I started. I have been in agriculture since 1980. I'm going to show you some picture when I started. Then you realize that uh, I'm not a newcomer. You are people joining a Greek. I have been a Greek since a long time. Since about 25, 30 years. Actually, I didn't know it was that long, but I show you a picture to one of our consultants. And she walked out the year and says about 30 something years, so that I felt very old. But why now? And why am I encouraging a lot of people to do agriculture? We're going to look at that very briefly. But I think one of the most important things that you will gain from this is number three is pig farming profitable. You, you are going to venture into pig farming, you want, you're not doing, you're not doing. I used to tell uh, my uh, big trees and I said that until you start selling pig, you're a zookeeper. If you are keeping animal until you sell your first batch of pig or you sell your first pig that you raise, so not the one that is sick, that you really want to sell. When you start selling your pigs, you're a zookeeper, that means you're just keeping animal for looking. And one of the things I'm going to work very hard today is to make sure by the time you leave this place, you don't live with the mentality of a zookeeper, but you live with the mentality of a commercial farmer. Commercial farmer, you are coming into pigs because you want to make profit, basically. So all the things that we're saying, I'm going to challenge some of your thoughts because I've seen, I've been, I've been studying the chat room. The chat room has been very good because it gave me an idea of different percep perception of people. And all of people are saying they are absolutely correct. And, uh, but in, in agriculture, there's no absolute truth. You have to find, know what your objective is. And once you know your objective, you do things that follow your objective. So you cannot copy me. I cannot copy you, literally. I can learn from you. So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look. So the economy of people, I'm going to make sure none of you is sleeping at this time. You can sleep or you can do so at any point in time. I'm not going to allow you because you pay a lot of money to the air. And I'm going to make sure this particular part is very important. There are some things you could do at the beginning that can save you thousands of thousands of. Uh, last week I was at Agbara, I was doing a training like this. And the guy that we, we did uh, the practical on his farm was not one of my protege. He came to my farm about a year, two months ago, February, and now he has over 500 pigs on his farm. And by the one thing about be, between now and June, he's going to have about 1,000 pigs on his farm. Why? Because of his farm, more than 48 pigs are pregnant right now. And all of them are going to give back before June. So if you go to his farm, you see farm around two, you think it's big. I was telling him that you prepare because within the next two months, by June, the number of pigs on your farm will have doubled. So my, what am I saying is I expect that by the time you leave this, I don't know what your goal and objective but you should be able to achieve it. And that's why these days I don't do practical training on my farm again. I go to the farm of people that are blank for me. So tomorrow we're going to go to another farm of a person that came to us. Fortunately, it was one of the ones that we recorded yeah, his video when he came for the training. So you see the date. I'm going to show you the video. Okay. When he came for training, he came all the way from Kaduna. And uh, because he's still in Kaduna, the farm we're going to is managed by a woman. So you're going to see, if a woman can do this, we need a very short time. You switch up all your phones. Uh, uh, I would recommend that we switch your phone away so we don't distract each other. And if you need to pick up your phone, I don't have any problem. But just don't talk during the conversation. Just go out and pick up your phone. I have no problem with it. So we're going to look at benefits. So we're going to do that tomorrow. We're going to look at, we're going to go to the farm and we start fumbling with things. So we start getting acquainted with pig. Because I always say, as a pig farmer, you have to be comfortable with pigs. If you're not comfortable with pigs, they would know. Because in the jungle, they don't look at eyes. 
when an animal is passing by, by the smell, not by the smell of the body, by the, by the what we call pheromone, by the hormone that is released from that animal, they will know whether it's a predator, that somebody is going to eat them, or whether it's a prey, or something that they can eat. So if you go to their farm and you are fearful, you start sending a pheromone out, and they start panicking because they are not sure again whether you are for them or you are against them. It's a natural thing. So as a pig farmer, it's very important for you that you are comfortable with your pigs. And tomorrow, I'm going to make sure that each one of you break that phobia of pigs that you might have in you. So we're going to look at benefits of pig farming. That is, what's the benefit as an individual? What's the benefit as a country? And what's the benefit? Why does many? Why am I encouraging many Nigerians to go into pig farming? We're going to look at that. And we're going to look at the attitude of, pigs, of profitable pig farmer. If you check the chapter, over the last three, four weeks, I've been looking at attitude. Because I believe farming in Nigeria is going to change our mentality. I believe Nigeria is at a stage where we are not even sure who we hide them on. We measure ourselves by things that are not really ours. In those days, when you suddenly become rich, people will question how you get your money. These days, when you become rich, because, as a, because they are farmers then, so they're going to build cocoa house, you know how many cocoa you have to send over a period of time because you can raise money to build something like cocoa house. But these days, you can, you can be poor today and overnight become a millionaire and nobody will question you. You don't do that as a farming. Farming is not get rich quick scheme. And while many of us think that we are very patient, farming is going to really stretch our, our, our patience because we will know it will help to put some things in poverty. First, we suddenly realize the value of hard work. When we are dealing with petroleum, we just go there to dig the petroleum and we don't need to do anything about the payoffs. But when it goes to you, you understand the law of sowing and reaping. That you sow today and you don't reach, you don't reap the following week, you don't reap the following month. In fact, before you reap anything, about three months for maize. For cassava, probably a year. In fact, for cocoa, for palm tree, you probably yourself are going to benefit. Your children, children are going to benefit. They're benefit, they're going to benefit out of it. So the mindset of I want to be rich tomorrow, I want to ride a good car. Farming, as it's becoming established in Nigeria by force, will change our paradigm, paradigm, not only among we youths, not only among the youth, but even among we so-called older people. Because over time, our mentality of wealth has been, and that's why everybody, that's why everybody is after money now. But money is good, but it's what you can do with the money. So we're going to look at attitude. What do we need to have? Have kind of attitude. I've seen many farms broken down because of, I was telling last week that seventy percent of the problem that will happen on your farm will be as a result of you, the provider. Though you will blame your staff, but you forget that you are the one that employed the staff. You are the one that's paying in peanuts. You are the only one. You are the one that didn't give them money to buy feed. You are the one that always complain when you go to the farm. Yet when things go wrong, you always. So we're going to look at different attitudes that you need to have as a as a proprietor. I'm I'm of the opinion that people that are here, I had a farm manager or proprietor, the people that owns the farm. And what I'm going to be teaching is very fundamental. We have another level of training for for for, for your employee, and that one we do it by. We use, I use my two consultants here. Once you buy, once you want to start your farm, the day you want to bring an animal to your farm, they, they can come with you, help you to set up your farm, compound your field, give injection, set the record straight, put get all your record in place, and then train your staff. Because most of the problem that we will have as a farmer is that we will not to find reliable staff. You think you have a staff, immediately you finish building and it knows that you, you are bringing animal in. They think their life depends on your hand, that you cannot sack them anyhow. When you are building, you can sack them. When there's animal on your farm, you cannot sack them. So they start developing attitude. But if they know that for the next two months, uh, uh, they have somebody on the farm who, always, who cannot leave your farm, so you get reliable staff in your locality. It helps. I think we was just leaving a farm last week. They have been there for the last two months. She was trying to help them at that farm. To, so during that period, they have a first time. They will come, they, they want, I said, the two weeks later, they will develop attitude, and they will say they want more money, and they will go. But because she was around, she was able to put stability on that farm. They were, they were able to find in that locality people that are reliable. Because at the end of the day, I always recommend, yes, I have consultants, and I want you to employ them forever. But people in the locality are always very really important to have on board. We'll talk more about that. We're going to talk about planning, locating, and construction of big farms. So, so I was telling one of the things now, one of the te my tenant rule is that if you're going to build a pig farm, it should not be more than two kilometers to the main road. My farm is five kilometers to the main road, and I paid dearly for it. But the number of vehicles I've used, the 
effort I have to do every if I go to my farm, the road is so bad that if I go there and I forget something, I will stay there for that day, even if I forget water. Because if I, I can't go there twice a day. And as a fish, as a farmer, as a proprietor, you need to be able to appear to your farm spontaneously when your staff are not are, are not you don't, you don't think you are coming. You cannot do that if your farm is too big. As long as somebody, I was in Agbara yesterday, and that uh, around this time, somebody texted me, the road to your training was re is very bad. And uh, and I thought that Agbara, and the road to your training was very bad. And I look at the road to Agbara was really, really, very bad. And I look at the text, and I laugh. I see this guy is expecting me to sympathize with him. I just say, yeah, welcome to Nigeria. Welcome to the farm world. Um, try and get as quick as quickly as possible because we're not going to wait for you. Because if you are certainly sympathy, the road to farm, most of the road to farm will not be good. So it's very important for us to know that the road will be good, we want to minimize that risk by making sure our farm is not too interior. Because once you build it there, you cannot take it out. I know that where my farm is not the best. And that's why I don't take you for training there. Because by the time we get there, we want to get there, by the time we get there today, we're so worn out. Apart from the time, we're so worn out that we're taking of, the, of, of, of way back. Those are things, those are kind of things that, that are some of the mistakes I've made in the past that I've been telling you so you don't make it. This guy was telling you, uh, the one on last week, I was able to show them the, what the house he built before he came for the training was eight, eight blocks high. Because we, there are a lot of advisors that were advising me, ah, big, big jump. They are telling us, I said big is a high jump or a hold, or hold like. It's a big jump, so make it very high. So it says you do eight blocks through to the soil. Eight blocks, so it was on this height. Now, even I can't see through it. But when it came for the training, by the time they did the training, they realized that only five, four, five coaches is enough for pig. They won't jump. And I said, How, uh, Would they not jump if they're hungry? I said, That's a problem. Why are you making them hungry? Feeding the pig is first fair, they'll be content. There's, no, there's only for them to jump out when there's no food. They think they're not smart. There's only for them to jump out when there's no food when they know. That if they stay inside, their food is coming, water is coming. So what are they only going to do outside? Pig don't normally do that. The only time the male will do that is there's a female on your, on your farm and it's on eight. When you stab and you serve a piano, you don't know. And the, and the pig want to save you money. He wants to make the animal by himself because if you <laughs> don't care, <laughs> he cares. That's the second time, which is to your benefit anyway, because then he's helping you to make the animal. We're going to be talking about that. Your animal, your female pig has to give back twice a year. And to do that, you need to make sure that they are mated on time. We're going to talk that. I don't want to go too far from there. We're going to talk about selecting. How do you select pigs in your farm? When you go to the farm, what are you looking out for? When you go to any, anybody's farm to pick, what are you be looking out for? How do you know good pigs? I saw some things have been going on in the yard. I do have good pigs. I'm going to tell you what good pigs mean. Good pigs doesn't mean foreign breed. Foreign breed might be part of it, but it doesn't mean foreign breed. We're going to look at that in more details. And transporting. How do you carry your pigs? Uh, one lady bought uh, in South. Uh, he said because he doesn't have any meal on her farm. He, he went. She went to another farm. I think the very last farm he was working. He went to that farm and said because I don't have a milk female on my behalf, and I bring it to my farm. And I've advised her. She has come. I've written business case for her. She has come for the training. That's how we recommend training for the people because in business case there's so much I can write for you, but in in in, um, in um, training you can ask questions. So I tell you, I told her that. The road in Nigeria is very bad. Pregnancy is a very complicated thing. Even we women that give birth to one or two or three at most, we know how complicated it is. So to a pig that gives birth to about seven, eight, nine, ten, you see, it's even more complicated than ours. And again, when they are pregnant, it, the the egg has to attach to the ovary. And anytime there is stress or disruption of bullying or anything that makes the pig inconvenient, they start losing the baby. That's why your pig will be can give birth to sixteen at any point in time. They have sixteen eggs. But in Nigeria, most of our pigs give back to six. Why? We're going to talk about why some of the things that can happen. Transportation is one of them. We're going to look at care management of pigs. How do you take care of pigs? Your farm hygiene, we're going to look at it. And we're going to talk about breeding. How do you make sure you, your pigs give back twice a year? We're going to look at things you need to look out for and how to make sure the animal is well. And finally, we're going to look, tomorrow we're going to look more into feed and feed formulation. I think that covers everything we want to cover. Don't you think so? So we're going to be looking at that. They introduced me. Um, my name is Adi Emiadishina. I started with I started as an agriculturalist from the beginning. My parents wanted me to study something else. Uh, the university I wanted to study something else was on strike. I don't want to, I don't want to keep on mentioning that it was on strike. You know, in the 1980s, people used to, uh, the great ones used to go on strike for a long time. So I ended up 
talk in a university that is doing agriculture. And uh, I tested I tested the four year, I tested the first year. And my mom might say, go back and do your architecture. And I said, no, this is what, I, this is what, I, what I feel like doing. And uh, years have passed. I've done many things after that, but still came back to agriculture. I've been in the UK for a while, and I've done many projects. I, I did my MBA at, uh, in London, and I've done many projects for UK government. I'm a project management by professional business analyst. But above.